Hello, this is Adam Stewart from stewartmedicine.com. Um, the coronavirus outbreak is evolving at a rapid pace, and I've made a few initial draft uh, EMR tools that I'll share right away for uh, offices who are using TELUS uh, PS Suite EMR to help with the telephone calls and giving advice to patients and, and triaging and such. Uh, the tools are subject to change and evolve, so keep keep uh, uh, checking the website. Um, but for now, I'll show you this this green background toolbar that I've made uh, called COVID-19. Um, the first button is a screening tool that the staff uh, will will use and or could use, and it you click that and it has a pop-up encounter assistant. And again, these questions are subject to change and evolve. But what I've got is our staff are going to be uh, triaging, first of all, anyone who specifically calls in for cough, fever, cold symptoms. But also we're going to be triaging people who might call in for other reasons, knee pain and, and such. And if they do answer that, yes, they have, um, they're going to be screened for cough, fever, cold symptoms. And if they do, we'll be using this as well. So the staff would similarly click the screen button. So this first area here differentiates between the two, those patients who have called in specifically for, for cough, cold symptoms versus maybe they called in for knee pain. Um, but then the staff can ask these kind of simple questions. When did it start? You know, maybe three days ago, maybe they say Friday, what have you. What are the symptoms? Do they have key symptoms? Fever, uh, new cough, or flu-like symptoms. So they can cycle through those answers. Other key uh, symptoms that might help, um, you know, shortness of breath, wheeze, uh, sore throat and nasal congestion, ear pain, those those types of questions. And how the patient rates the symptoms themselves, mild, moderate, or severe. Uh, risk factors, recent travel outside of Ontario, contact with someone who recently traveled outside of Ontario, or possible contact with a positive COVID-19 person. Uh, again, I think that the virus is going to be ra um, evolving ra at rapid pace, and I think these screening questions are going to become quickly irrelevant um, and, and we'll probably just want to delete that section. Uh, another key thing I found is the patient calling in because they were just concerned of cold symptoms in general, like they would any normal cold, or are they calling in maybe just because they have mild symptoms and they're just concerned what to do if they have COVID-19. So that helps. I, felt, I found that that helps differentiate between the two. Uh, and then, so what happens here is the staff can put in additional notes, you know, um, missed work, Space has same, something like that. I should mention that this is a fake patient chart up here, just so people know. And then, and so the staff give this is a disclaimer. The staff advised the patient that they're gonna um, call or have have get back to them either the doctor or MP will or directly or the or they'll get advice relayed. Um, because again, our office is taking the approach that we want to have people who have cough, cold, fever symptoms to stay outside of our office, call first, and we'll provide direction from there. By clicking this little button here, or checkbox here, when you click finish, the staff, whoever they are signed in under, the doctor or the, or the NP, it will send an automatic message to that, do that doctor NP uh, to, to reply to this. So when they click finish, what happens is, this message is from myself to myself, but in, in, in practice it would be from the staff to myself because they were signed in under me. And this stamps this note in the chart. Uh, the, the the screen and um, so I then get it you know uh, that uh, that day or, or or in a few minutes when I when I see that and then so I see this and I so now let's pretend now I've entered the open the chart so I can now get into some some things so let's say I I want to call the patient so I'm gonna archive that message and I'm gonna call the patient and so I've got a few uh, things started here a, a little bit of an encounter system I'm gonna minimize this. CPP so you can see better. So, you know, I called or did I email the patient. When I'm talking to them on the phone, I might want to clarify some of these risk factors. Uh, if COPD, for example, if they do have COPD, I can click that and it gives me a few more um, clarification questions. You know, does this feel like they're typical? Or if they have asthma, maybe they, they don't have COPD and they have asthma. So you can get the puffers help. So just, just typical questions like that uh, that might help. 
So, um, general notes. So you, this is more of where I would type in my my elaboration. Like uh, feels like my like mild typical sinus infection has some shortness of breath, but um, attributes to coughing, not true shortness of breath. So then based on this, I found that I'm either saying, okay, there's maybe maybe a COVID suspected, uh, maybe COVID-19 is clearly not suspected based on the risk factor, lack of risk factors and things like that. Um, maybe I tell, you know, regardless of whether it's COVID, it's, it sounds mild to moderate. So then I'm getting into giving, and then, or you might even say, um, you know, something, something else, like maybe you think it's a COBD flare. Um, the, the plan section, you know, letting the patient aware of the limitations of a virtual visit that we can't examine, um, dis discuss supportive care, uh, and mild to moderate viral UT URTIs. That's typically what I've been doing for the most part, uh, explaining that they, to making sure the patient's aware that what to watch for and, and how to contact for help if symptoms worsen discussing contact precautions. Um, some of these other ones that I haven't gotten into yet because I haven't experienced any patients that have severe symptoms, but you know, calling public health directly. Um, um, we will or we will call public health on their behalf and get back to them for the direction. Or if they're really sounding really unwell, you know, call 911 or emerge immediately. And then some of these this is localized, so you'll want to change these to your own local resources, but these are some common resources that I've been accumulating and just I can check them off. Uh, if I give them to the to the patient or not. Um, so one key thing here is I've also built this this button here that says um, letter to patient for mild to moderate symptoms, and that same button uh, is up here in the toolbar. Uh, patient mild to moderate. So what happens is if I click that, there's a couple of different ways. I'm going to click it up here on the toolbar to start. If I click that, um, this is a fake patient again. So test email it's asking if it had the patient actual email it would automatically enter that and it's going to stamp this into the chart um this this letter that says uh advice on mild to moderate symptoms and there's a whole stamp that i've included in there and you can modify it as you want to again i've got some local resources at the bottom but it explains um you know some typical symptoms regardless of whether it's or sorry um regardless of whether it's a mild cough, cold, typical virus, or coronavirus. Uh, if it's mild to moderate, the same uh, upper respiratory, respiratory, respiratory infection symptom treatments will apply. It's just a link to my website on some of that stuff. A short video on uh, from the OMA on how the coronavirus is spread. The, the OMA's website on viruses, the government's website on, on the coronavirus. And again, some advice that if they end up feeling worse, to be sure that they know what to do. Um, and then if I, I could click send, and that would click send off that email. Um, so another way to do it, again, if I press this button while I'm in the encounter assistant, what happens is it's going to uh, stamp that same same letter into the, into the um, chart, and I can just click that and then email it off from there. So when I'm done, I press finish, and then we've got, there's our initial screening note from the staff, and then there's my directions to patient documentation. And you notice I've embedded a couple custom vitals uh, at COVID-19 screen or at COVID-19 reply. And that helps maybe maybe forward thinking uh, if you want, we want to be pulling searches on how many of these patients we've uh, screened and tracked or maybe even getting into some billing codes uh, later on when we need them. I'll just show you, I'll, I'll, I'm, um, I'll include the searches. They're just basic searches, but um, if I go into the searches once you've installed them, COVID-19 screened, so it's going to be searching for just these, um, those who have been screened or and those who have been replied. So along those lines, if you don't end up using, let's say you have a quick free text note, if you don't end up using any of these official tools, I've also include some, some quick, included some quick um, buttons that, so patient screened, that will automatically just include a note to the patient screen or and uh, that you reply to the patient. Just in, it just briefly, quickly stamps just those custom vitals in for tracking purposes if you wish to use them. Um, one key note, uh, I found that um, uh, installing 
the reminders that trigger the toolbar to appear. Uh, they don't always install correctly. So um, if it doesn't, if the installation doesn't happen to work, I'll just walk you through this. Uh, tr the toolbars are triggered by reminders, if you, if you might remember, um, to create a reminder or to edit it. You would go to see here, there, and the reminder for this one is just set for anyone under the age of 199. So that's anyone, and that you want to make sure that this that the this is clicked off, and you're linking to that toolbar, um, COVID-19 version one toolbar. Um, that, that will make sure it's installed. I'll, I'll maybe uh, include a, a screenshot of that in the in the um, in the zip folder. Um, one little advanced tip in our office: what we're going to do is actually uh, separate the toolbars so that, or maybe only make this toolbar show up for our end doctors and nurse practitioners when keywords like COVID nineteen or the or the custom vitals are within the patient's chart within the last. Uh, two days and then otherwise it'll disappear and it won't be taking up screen space and as well we've taken we haven't made this whole toolbar short for their staff we've just taken basically this button and inserted it on their more general toolbars for them so that it's, it's not taking up screen real estate but for the basic user this uh, did this setup should work work quite fine um, again check for uh, ongoing updates for this I hope you found this useful um, thank you very much